My name is Amin Azam, and as you can see, I'm on faculty at two campuses of the University of California. I'd like to talk with you about variation in the use of problem-based learning, or PBL, in North American medical schools. This video is one of a series of videos about problem-based learning, and this particular one is the third of six videos. So you may wonder how often PBL is used in uh, medical schools. First, let me just mention that it's actually used more widely in other parts of the world than in the United States. So it's heavily used in the United Kingdom, in Australia, Canada, other parts of the English-speaking world. It's also pretty heavily used in Scandinavian countries and beginning to get more used in Asia and other developing um, economies. But let's look to the literature for North America. Here's an article uh, from 2005 in Academic Medicine uh, uh, looking at the use of PBL in U.S. medical schools in the 2003-04 uh, academic year. And I'll point out to you that all 123 schools responded. That's a great success rate, so kudos to Scott Kincaid and his team for making that happen. And at that time, 70% of North American, or excuse me, American medical schools used PBL in their preclinical years. Within our article, this is Table 1, and this actually looks at not just whether the school uses PBL, but what fraction of the student's curricular time is PBL. And so I'll point out here that uh, there's a large number of schools that actually use PBL, but even though that is a majority of medical schools, the majority of those that use PBL use it for a relatively small percentage of their students' curricular experiences. So you'll see that there's only five medical schools that used PBL more than half of the students' curricular time, at, at least in the 03-04 academic year. So I'd like to put this in a local context. I had the privilege of being on a panel of uh, medical educators in the 2009 AAMC Western Group on Educational Affairs regional meeting. Uh, and what we did was look at the use of PBL in our medical schools in the West and asked ourselves what fraction of our time and what's the footprint exactly, what does it look like for our students when they're using PBL. So here is our one of the summary tables from our presentation. And you can see here just four of the five schools represented, but um, there's wide variation in the structure of PBL as well as the amount of curricular time. And I'll point out at the bottom there, the UC Berkeley Joint Medical Program, we use PBL seven and a half hours a week, and that makes up about 80% of the student's total medical school time. I want to depict this uh, in addition as compared to the UCSF medical school curriculum, of which I'm also a part. So I'm not bad-mouthing UCSF. I just want to show you a contrasting curricular model. So at UCSF, they have a two-year, what would be considered a traditional 2 plus 2 kind of curriculum, where the first two years are predominantly classroom-based learning, and the last two years are predominantly hospital or clinical-based learning. And in the first two years, the curriculum is a series of integrated courses that run, uh, as you can see, prologue, organs, metabolism, nutrition, brain, mind, behavior in the first year, and the three other courses listed there for the second year. And if we use this symbol to represent a time in the curriculum at UCSF where they have a PBL case, then the students at UCSF have a single PBL case that's embedded into the Foundations of Patient Care course, but it ties into the uh, parallel curricular content so that the students have a total of seven PBL cases spread out over two years. In contrast, this is the UC Berkeley UCSF Joint Medical Program pre-clerkship curriculum. Now I'm going to describe the JMP so that you have a sense of what it is uh, so you can unpackage this uh, big 35,000 foot curricular roadmap. So there are three parallel curricular arms and you can see that there are three years, academic years, for students to engage in the pre-clerkship curriculum. In the bottom right you'll see that they join the UCSF students for the final two years of medical school. So I like to think about the J in joint medical program as standing for both joint degree and joint campus. So the three parallel curricular arms here at the JMP, the purple one is the master's thesis curriculum. So all students engage in completing a master's degree which spans the entire three years and in which they receive general training and research skills. Uh, it includes required and elective coursework at UC Berkeley in longitudinal mentoring. It culminates with a research thesis and the a master's science degree is an academic degree in health and medical sciences that's awarded by Berkeley. Many people who know about the program think it's a formal MPH. It's not. It's a master's of science degree. That's uh, one of the three arms. The second arm is the blue or light blue boxes, and that is what we call the contextually integrated case-based curriculum, or kickback for short. And kickback covers the equivalent of the basic science years of medical school, uh, and it is entirely problem-based learning. No required lectures whatsoever. 
I'll say more about that shortly. The third arm of the curriculum is the clinical skills or patient care curriculum. And this is the equivalent of the introduction to patients type courses that just about every medical school has, doctoring 101, intro to the patient, that kind of thing. Um, and it prepares students for their clerkship years of medical education. So these are the three parallel arms of the Berkeley curricular model. So let's compare the JMP curriculum with the UCSF curriculum. And, and just to remind you, we're just talking about the pre-clerkship years, the first two years of medical school before you go on to the final clerkship, hospital, or clinic-based years. So here are the UCSF courses. Just instead of spread out over two lines, I'm just merging them into one line. And you can see that series of courses there. And here are these buckets of knowledge. Let's assume that by the end of each course, the students have filled their buckets of knowledge. In contrast, here's the UC Berkeley curricular arm, those three uh, parallel years, um, and those are those blue boxes I mentioned earlier. And so if we take any one of those units, that's just an artificial uh, divide of a semester into two halves. So each of these blue boxes represents one PBL case. So let's say, for example, that this case, the beginning of UC Unit 6 is a case of a patient with breast cancer, and that this might be a case of a patient with an acute myocardial infarction. What's happening at the JMP curriculum, basically, effectively, is that the students are filling up these buckets of knowledge to variable amounts on each case, depending upon what the content of the case triggers for the students. So ultimately, the concept here is that the students are learning in parallel in these buckets rather than in series in a traditional curriculum. So you can see, in fact, that there is quite a wide variety of use of problem-based learning in North American medical schools. As I mentioned at the beginning of this module, there is in fact wide use of PBL in other parts of the globe. So this is one of a series of six videos about PBL, and if you like this one, watch the others.